Hello again, my fellow pilots and aircraft maintenance personnel. Your host is always Haysam Ali, and I'm an aviation technical instructor. Welcome to my aviation nuggets for today. Today, we will have a short minutes regarding the Airbus A320 thrust reverser system related to the engine CFM 56-5B. CFM 56-5B. Okay, so in this short minutes, we will talk about thrust reverser system operation, thrust reverser system control, indication of the thrust reverser, main component of the thrust reverser. Okay, everybody. So, as you can see here, the thrust reverser system of the CFM 56-5B engine is of the aerodynamic blockage type. Aerodynamic blockage type. We have four pivoting blocker doors stop and redirect fan discharge airflow into the forward motion okay so we have four pivoting blocker doors two blocker door are located on each c duct so we have two c ducts and four pivoting blocker doors so again the type of the thrust reverser system of the cfm 56-5b is an aerodynamic blockage type aerodynamic blockage type okay so each blocker blocker door everybody each blocker door everybody is operated by a hydraulic actuator hydraulic actuator okay this actuator will receive fluid hydraulic fluid from the hydraulic control unit hydraulic control unit this is the main component of the thrust reverser system of the thrust reverser system so this hydraulic control unit has a function to allow hydraulic fluid to reach the actuator of the thrust reverser blocker door and to release the door latch to release the door latch you need to remember that door latches must, must be released in series before operating or deploy the thrust reverse. Before operating or deploy the thrust reverse. Okay, everybody. So, thrust reverser system operation must happen on ground only. Must happen on ground only. So, we have three line of defense in order to operate the thrust reverser only on ground. Three line of defense must agree and they need to agree together to allow the thrust reverser system operation on ground only. So what computer is the main computer or what computer are the main computer for the three line of defenses? For the three line of defenses, we have electronic control unit ECU, which is the engine computer, FADIC computer. We have engine interface unit. And also we have a spoiler elevator computer. So primary line of defense is managed by electronic control unit. Secondary line of defense by an engine interface unit. And third line of defense managed by sick or spoiler elevator computer. What different do you have here? ECU, EIU, and SEC. The difference are the third line of defense managed by spoiler elevator computer is an airframe system computer, not an engine computer. So we have ECU and EIU are engine computer for primary line of defense and the secondary line of defense. But the third line of defense is managed by spoiler elevator computer, SIC, which, has, which is an airframe system computer airframe system computer or flight control computer so also why the third line of defense is an airframe system computer because the third line of defense must be an independent line of defense must be a computer other than engine computer other than engine computer okay everybody so in order to have hydraulic fluid reach the actuator and release the door latches this hydraulic control unit must be able to receive hydraulic fluid and only it will receive hydraulic fluid 
if the shutoff valve is opened by the third line of defense action by the third line of defense action so actually everybody spoiler elevator computer can open the shutoff valve by energizing this relay in order to allow hydraulic fluid reach the hydraulic control unit so the shutoff valve and the spoiler elevator computer again is a third line of defense and they are called independent line of defense why they are called independent line of defense because they are an airframe system computer not an engine computer and an independent shutoff valve not related to the engine an independent shutoff valve not related to the engine so hydraulic supply from the engine driven bump of the same engine in order to reach the hydraulic control unit the shutoff valve must be opened first the shutoff valve must be opened first okay everybody so i need to tell you that the secret number of thrust reversal system operation is number three we have three line of defense managed by three computer ecu eiu and the sec the input is coming or to allow thrust reversal deployment must be done manually from the cockpit the pilot need to release the reverser latching lever in order to have the throttle control lever going from the idle position to reverse idle then to a maximum reverse from idle position then to a reverse idle then to a maximum reverse so also the input from the throttle control lever is coming from three component inside the throttle control unit underneath the throttle control lever so we have potentiometer resolver and switch three components or three input need to analyze certain angles at minus three and the minus 3.8 and the minus 4.6 to allow the spoiler elevator computer to operate, the engine interface unit to operate, and the electronic control unit to operate. So yes, we have first line of defense managed by ECU, second line of defense managed by EIU, and third line of defense managed by SIC. This is the third line of defense, but it is the first action to happen. This is the second line of defense and the second action to happen. And this is the first line of defense and the third action to happen. Third action to happen. Okay, everybody. So at first, the spoiler elevator computer need to check with radio altimeter about aircraft altitude and if the aircraft is near the ground. So at minus three throttle resolver angle or throttle lever angle the spoiler elevator computer will energize this relay allowing the shuttle valve to open so now the hydraulic supply can reach the hydraulic control unit can reach the hydraulic control unit okay everybody so at minus 3.8 minus 3.8 a dedicated switch in the throttle control unit will tell the EIU that the pilot now shows reverse thrust and the throttle lever angle at minus 3.8 so the EIU will energize this inhibition relay inhibition relay and that will only happen if the EIU check from the landing gear control interface unit that the aircraft is on ground that the aircraft is on ground from the LGCIU so now when the EIU energizes and allows the inhibition relay to be ready. So only now the electronic control unit can energize the directional valve inside the hydraulic control unit. As you can see here, the electronic control unit can energize directly the pressurizing valve. But indirectly, the ECU can energize the directional valve only when this inhibition relay is ready so at minus 4.2 throttle lever angle now the electronic control unit 
will energize the solenoid of the pressurizing valve and the directional valve and the directional valve okay everybody so what is the difference between pressurizing valve and the directional valve the pressurizing valve is an on off valve that will allow the hydraulic to go to the the actuator and to release the door latches door latches okay so what is the function of the directional valve the directional valve can direct hydraulic fluid into stow or deploy side of the actuator if you need to deploy thrust reverse or you need to stow the thrust reverse deploy or stow the thrust reverse okay you need to remember that directional valve will only be energized to deploy only to deploy only and only when the pressurizing valve and directional valve energized by the ECU so now we can do deploy but in case of stow thrust reverser system stowing only the ECU will energize the pressurizing valve the ECU will energize the pressurizing valve okay everybody very good i hope you enjoy this information and always stay tuned for an upcoming session like this and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel aviation nuggets by hey sam ali okay everybody let's proceed so we can recall some information the inputs are three from the throttle control unit we have potentiometer, resolvers, and switch. Resolvers will speak with the ECU. Potentiometer will speak with the spoiler elevator computer. And dedicated switch for the EIU. Dedicated switch for the EIU. So inputs are three. Computers are three. ECU, EIU, and SEC. ECU, EIU, and SEC. Main component shut off valve, independent valve, and the hydraulic control unit. Only for deploy, the ECU will energize the pressurizing valve and the directional valve. So you need to remember that the directional valve will only be energized only to deploy. Only to deploy. So remember this information. The ECU will only or can only energize the directional valve by readiness of this inhibition relay. So that the EIU must energize this inhibition relay so that the ECU can energize the directional valve. The ECU can energize the directional valve. Okay, everybody. So what about latches of the thrust reverser system pivoting blocker doors? We have just two latches here, not three latches, only two independent latching mechanism. Only two independent latching mechanism. Door latch and an actuator latch. One inside the actuator and one on the door. So we have four door latch. Four door latch. They must be opened and released in series first. Then the hydraulic can go to the actuator and release the actuator latch and allow the thrust reverser to be deployed. So when we speak about latches, we only speak about two latching mechanism, not three latching mechanism. Door latch mechanism, uh, sorry, actuator latch mechanism and the door latching mechanism. And the door latching mechanism. Okay, everybody. So what about indication of the thrust reverser system? We have the indication of the thrust reverser system coming on the N1 dial, N1 dial, because this is a CFM56 engine, and the main control parameter of the thrust is the N1. So the N1 dial is the main indication. So you need to remember that thrust reverser system indication will only come on the N1 dial, reverse in amber or reverse in green reverse in amber or reverse in green so what is the difference if reverse in amber is coming so that the thrust reverser pivoting blocker door are in transit but only when the pivoting blocker doors all pivoting blocker doors are fully deployed this reverse in amber will change into reverse in green and if the pivoting blocker doors are stowed, 
okay so you will have no indication on the n1 dial so this indication are coming from where from the stow switch and from the dual deploy switch stow switch and they will deploy switch so we have stow switch for each pivoting blocker door and we have one they will deploy switch for each two pivoting blocker door on a certain side left or right so we only have two they will deploy switch because each they will deploy switch monitors the operation and the shooting of two pivoting blocker doors of two pivoting blocker doors so you need to remember everybody that the stow switch will indicate if one stow switch say that one pivoting blocker door is not stowed a reverse in amber is coming on the n1 dial and only if the four pivoting blocker doors are at 95 percent of the shooting only now this reverse in amber will change into reverse in green will it change into reverse in green so the normal sequence of indication if you select the thrust reversal system no indication on the n1 dial then reverse in amber then reverse in green and during stow the green indication will go to amber indication and then to no indication so now the pilot will be satisfied if there is no indication that the four pivoting blocker doors are stowed at zero in position at zero position okay everybody so stow switches and they will deploy switching they will deploy switch having the function of an indication of thrust reversal system on the n1 dial on the n1 dial okay everybody as a summary we need to say that this is an engine interface unit eiu engine interface unit this is an ecu electronic control unit and this is the lgciu landing gear control interface unit so regarding the condition the sick must satisfy from the radio altimeter that the aircraft altitude is near ground the now the aircraft is near to the ground the EIU will check from the LGCIU that the aircraft is on ground down and compressed landing gear on ground and compressed from the shock strut proximity detectors okay and each ECU must check with the other ECU that the other engine must be at idle in order to allow this engine to go to reverse thrust reverse thrust so the story begin at zero because the reverse segment is from zero to minus 20. reverse idle at minus six so the story start from zero to minus six three degrees three throttle lever angles minus three will tell the sick minus 3.8 will tell the engine interface unit and minus 4.2 will tell the ecu so again, three computers, ECU, EIU, SIC, three conditions, radio altimeter, landing gear control interface unit, and other engine at on idle. Two latch mechanism, actuator latch, and the door latch. Switch mechanism, stow switches, and they will deploy switches they will deploy switches okay everybody thank you for your good listening thank you very much for your good listening and always fly safely and maintain your aircraft very safely from cairo egypt your ho your host was haysam ali and i'm an aviation technical instructor please stay tuned for an upcoming sessions like this my short nuggets will allow you to recall Airbus aircraft, aircraft systems. Thank you for your good listening and goodbye.